Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Velisca Axe Murder House. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, as well as directly on the video on Bun. Good to be back. Thank you for holding down the fort That's last That's true, week. I did hold it all the way down. Held it the by hell down! myself while Shane was out there Lord. fucking chasing leaves or something. I was chasing leaves. It I saw sounds like I saw, you, I saw you out there. I picked them up, I looked at them, I took some photos of them, I smelled them. Velisca Axe Murder House is what we're here talking about today. A fun episode. Uh, a location that I think you can agree we've been eyeing for a long time. That's true, it's been on my list for a while, and finally I was able to take that quill and mark it off. I think we could both agree this house was horrifying. Yeah, Just I mean, it's more- society, it was not a pleasant place to be. Well, we go to a lot of places that are haunted, you know? Like, I was very aware of this place well before we ever started Unsolved. It's a place you hear about. It's a place that has a weight to it in terms of the Vicious, vicious slaughterings that occurred there. Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah that is true. And some bacon. Mm. Mm. Also, it's just so concentrated. Like, it's such a tiny location where such a horrible really? thing happened. Yeah. There's really nowhere to hide in no. this place. Every room feels like an awful place to be. Also, all the furniture in the house, for the most part, uh, was original too, which also added to the dread of that place. Anyways, let's jump into these Yeah, pews. that sounds fun. Uh, Shane, when the voice in this specific episode said, what is it? What would you write it off as? It sounds a little too clear to just be something like the wind. Upside down, smiley face. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's pretty mm -hmm. clear. It's yeah. pretty, I'd, I'd say that's a class A EVP. Oh, that's great. I would say most of the EVPs we've gotten on this show, probably class B. Maybe class C. Well, I mean, EVPs don't really mean anything to me because it's pseudoscience. Is so it? that's Yeah, I mean, it what is. What was that voice then? Just audio inner, you know, it's, au it's audio, it's noise. It's noise. Do you think that doesn't sound like a voice saying what is it? It sounds like a voice, sure. A lot of things sound like voices. So what was it? Noise. There's no scientific you, basis for what you're talking about. You so. haven't offered any explanation for it. I, I shouldn't like have to. Why is why not? Why, why are you again, on your it's like you tower? saying, well, I think there's unicorns, and me saying, all right, cool, nice. Well, I think it's a pretty fair <laughs> thing to be like, uh, I hear a voice saying, what is it? And you go, well, it's not that. And I say, okay, then what is it? Huh. I told you it was noise. It's noise. It's noise. Well, all you Shaniacs out there, I hope you're happy with that explanation. He really nailed it there, and uh, that's the, your leader. The, so. <laughs> They were probably pretty happy with it. I because saw a lot of people in the comments. They were they, like, I have to say, that voice is pretty fucking clear. I don't normally believe in this kind of thing, but. Well, if you're a Shaniac and you do think it's compelling, mm -hmm. you cut from the team. That was so satisfying of an explanation from Shane. I don't have to explain anything. Well, that's very good. You have to give me observable, repeatable evidence. You have to be able to prove this stuff in a way that ties to science. It's the specificity. <laughs> There's not, I'm not saying that there's a scientific aspect of it. I I'm forgot just, that the science is, it's the specificity. Well, I would just love some I specificity forgot. from you. I forgot. No, oh, you could sit I'm, there and sneer and be like, <laughs> well, it's not the science of it. It's not on me. It's, not, mean, my, it's not my prerogative to prove it. It's not scientific. It's not. Of course, that voice sure sounds like it's saying, what is it? But I just think it's noise because I'm an asshole. I don't think <laughs> it's that. I, I don't, no, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm uh, an uh, asshole, uh, yes. Uh, 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 um, you seem like you're getting riled up over no, there. I'm, just, right? I'm trying to get a rise out of you. No, I don't think you are. What's the specific thing that it is if it's not a It's voice? my sexy denim jeans rubbing together. That's what I want. Next question, Ryan. Let's go to, uh, at Melanie G Glaze? Glaze? Do you think the man stabbed himself so people would think a ghost did it to him? Like he wanted to think a ghost attacked him to have some crazy ghost story? He survived the wound, so maybe he knew where to stab himself to survive the attack. Hashtag postmortem. Can't imagine anyone would want to pr even e even you. Yeah, I feel like you, that. You would love nothing more than to get definitive proof of one. Well, I feel things. like I've already gotten that. If he was trying to prove a point, surely he would have, you know, knocked on the neighbor's door. He would have stabbed. A ghost stabbed me. Like Casper that. shanked me. From Jocelyn Rodriguez on Facebook. Hashtag postmortem. One great episode. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Two, been watching from the start of the show, so big fan. Thank you. There it is, great. Three, you guys got some of the most evidence in any episode. 
Also, thank you. Thank you. Which is not that much evidence, but... Four. Do you think the killer was actually hiding in the attic? Even if he was, how would his ghost be present slash his body was never found? Maybe some vigilante activity occurred and someone found slash killed slash buried the killer on the property. I don't know. I mean, we often come across this subject of like, why does a person haunt a place? There's like so many different trains of thought that I've kind of just kind of given up on it. I guess you could say that like a place that someone felt very fond of or not fond of or had some sort of connection to in some sort of way, it makes sense that they would be there. But I don't know. It'd be sick as hell if there was like a ghost highway where you could haunt like a yeah, lot like of in different Coco. places you've been, like in Coco or like if like when you die, you turn into Dr. Manhattan and you can just exist in multiple states all over the place. So I could be like, yeah, I want to haunt my grade school growing up, but I also want to haunt um, a corner bakery that I really liked in Burbank. I think we're really going to find out the answer of whether or not ghosts are real when the hosts of these shows, ourselves included, start dying off. Um, <laughs> because here's the thing, if I fucking beef it and I, and I die, you better bet your ass that I'm gonna fucking do everything I can to prove that ghosts are real <laughs> after I'm dead. In my mind, I had always imagined the attic was above the top floor, but it is... In, it's like in the top it's floor. It's parallel with it's, the top It's more floor. like a giant closet. It's on the second floor, it's essentially a giant closet with, the door was smaller, right? It was more like a crawl space door. That whole house was tiny. It was like a dollhouse. Yeah, so it's very, it was, I remember when we were there, I was really trying to crunch the numbers on if the killer could have hidden in that attic because I always thought maybe the killer was hiding in the attic, but that was me supposing that the attic was above everything. With the attic being like, right there in the main hallway. I was like, how could they not have seen someone? But I guess well, if it was full of yeah, stuff, full of shit, right? they could yeah. be like maybe crouched behind something. No one has an empty attic. It really is amazing to me that a person was able to sneak around that house without anybody waking up. Like maybe the first person, sure, crawls out of the attic, very cat-like, and then does the deed. But you would have to think that there would be some sort of Skirmish, or if not a skirmish, maybe even just the noise itself, because there was not a lot of structural integrity to this right. joint. It okay. felt like every footstep you were taking was like reverberating through the house. No, for sure. And I just feel like it's crazy that somebody could sneak around and murder eight people. I don't understand it. That's like the craziest part about this story to me. Like, I know this is the supernatural postmortem, but this has just always confounded me from a true crime perspective. I don't understand how this guy got away with it. And also in terms of the evidence, we, yeah, we had some really good spirit box sessions in this one too. I didn't like arguing about the noise. I think for the rest of the season, I'm just gonna roll over and let you have fun with it, honestly. I get There's it. gotta That's be funny. a friendly polarity here. It just no matter got what, so no, heated no matter there. what happens, and I'll say this to the audience at home too, no matter what happens between him and I on camera, I respect this man. Hermanos fantasmas. And I would trust him holding my newborn child. Uh, really? I don't have a newborn child, but if I did, I'd, I'd toss it over to Shane and I'd trust he, him to catch it. He'd, he'd throw it like a football. We're here to have fun. We'll, pro we'll probably argue again before the season's oh, out. And I'm gonna love every second of it. And after yeah. that, you know what I'm gonna do? Well done, sir. That's the Ghoul Brothers guarantee. That was At the end good, of the day, we shake hands. That was a good, okay, you're squeezing my hand a little tight there. We shake hands. Okay, We're I get it. Brothers. It was a good gesture. You can let go of the hand now. All right. Uh, this comes from Lindsay underscore duet, hashtag postmortem. Is it just me or has Ryan tweaked his storytelling voice? Much softer and sleeker. <laughs> I don't know, just something I noticed. Also wanted to tell the boys how much I appreciate them. Happy last season, ghoul boys. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, hashtag Bugara, hashtag love you too, and then it has like a, a heart emoji. I definitely just spoke more normal. That was a consequence of doing this at concurrently with Are You Scared? Where I just talk like I normally talk in Are You Scared? Whereas like before with Unsolve, I used to kind of really amp it up. And I just felt like, you know what? This last season, let's just be me, baby. When it takes longer between seasons like it has, do you ever, when you go to sit down and do the VO, do you kind of forget like, how hard you go with it sometimes. Cause I think in past seasons you have, it's been a lot more like Rod Serling. Yeah. Not not that it sounds like Rod Serling, but a little more like, That'd be sick. a little more um, played up. 
you know? Oh, absolutely. There's definitely been seasons where I, I, I've played it up. But do you ever get to the end of a season and then realize after the fact, like, oh, I guess I didn't do that as much this season? I've definitely got into the end of the season and been like, mm, that's a bit much, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Uh, but that's also just a, the consequence of how we shoot this show. It, it very much is a vacuum for me. I, there's no, I'm not in a VO booth with a bunch of fancy gadgets and producers telling me like, can you see that line again? It's, it's me with my headphones in my underwear, in my office, my home office, that's also my gym. Last YouTube question from Cody H. Ryan, when it felt like something sat next to you on the bed and you tried to show Shane, did it not occur to you that you were sitting on a ghost? <laughs> that moment was, was really wild just because it was later in the night, I was tired. That's right. And I, it, normally this is what happens when we get to the later part of shoots and Shane could tell where you know the energy's starting to drop. He'll often fuck with me. Like he'll he'll make a noise or he'll do something to get a reaction out of me. I very rarely go out of my way to to like do fake fake outs for you. Though I will like play up like, oh, did you hear that? Well, like if a, you do a fake out, I don't even know if it's fair to call it a fake out because you'll do it and then immediately after you'll be like, oh, it was just me, just right. trying to get a rise out of you. It's not like you're trying to fake evidence, but. Um, in this particular case, it was late in the night. I was sitting on that bed. Shane was in the wall, like the wall was being shared with what the bed was pushed up against. I thought he just pushed against the wall. No, I was just standing and there. And moved the bed. I was standing there not entirely knowing what the point of me being in the closet was. There was wasn't like, This really doesn't a point. make any sense. No, you were just like. <laughs> I'm just standing here quietly, not moving. It was your suggestion. I know. <laughs> and really... then I got in there and I was like, <laughs> I, I guess I don't know why I'm in here. If I wanted to kind of analyze that and try and debunk it, I don't recall moving in different spots on the bed, but maybe Shane had sat there before and the mattress was old, so maybe it just kind of like settled and then just popped up. Yeah, it's tough for me to, to really gauge that one because I wasn't out there. You obviously felt it, you were there. And I hopped up off of it and then I immediately scolded Shane because I was like, why did you do that? Let's look at some fan art. All righty. There's a lot of good stuff this season. Let's look at this one from Amy Lane Draws. Oh shit, this is cool. This is very good. Oh wow, did you see the, the detail of your shadow? Yeah, I'm a That's little good. demon man in this That's shadow. very good, Thank I like you. that a lot. Very good. Thank Some you, Amy, for that. Behind you there, love that. Let's move to the next one here. This is from Ant Wonkfi. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> squirt gun moment. More. <laughs> one of my favorite moments in that. <laughs> It was really fun. <laughs> in that episode. You really caught me off guard with that. I thought you wouldn't be that childish. I respect that you were equally childish in return. I you should walk through the thought process. Thought process was Ryan sprayed me in the face. Thought that was rude. Thought that was rude, but hey, you know. But we're funny. Here to have I, thought fun. I thought it was funny as hell. And I can't, I think I'll I do it again. told you, I thought about telling you, like, I'm going to get you back later, but then I thought, let's just tamp that down. And then when we started doing our little seance with the Ouija board, I was like, here's what I'll do. I'll tell him we should close our eyes and hum. Because that'll allow me to very stealthily take out the gun because he won't hear it then and put it right up to his face and shoot him. Also, what's really funny is if you look at the clip again, he doesn't waste a single second to unholster that pistol. Immediately, as soon as I start humming and close my eyes, he well, just I like with, with fucking just <laughs> dead killer eyes, just, well, I was afraid that you were gonna open your eyes at any given moment and be like, this doesn't make sense. You had no expression so on your like, face. I was like, I have to move. I gotta move stealthily and silently. Let's go to Aunt Oobwitch, the ghoul school, learn to, to, to kiss uh, hunt ghouls. If you're a fan of the kissing, stay tuned. That's gonna pop up uh, across the season. That's a technique that we developed over here in BuzzFeed Unsolved HQ. Our uh, methods are controversial. They're a little unorthodox, but they do get results. But this is lovely. It's a good, it's a good post. That's really nice. Ryan, what's coming up next week on BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural, the okay. final season? This is a location we've always wanted to go to. Boy, did we dress for the occasion. We sure did. And that's all I'll say. Yeah, that's a fun one. It's a fun, it's a fun jaunt through a, a historical, lovely little town. Well, now it is, back then probably not so much. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the next episode this Friday and be sure to comment your thoughts on the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, or comment directly on the video on, on Bun, Bun, and maybe we'll you'll be in you. the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. 
all good. See ya. See you next week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>